All right, everybody, this week on 3D Archery, I'm making the big jump. I'm gonna try to build my own laminated one-piece bow. everybody welcome to 3d archery yes it's winter time it means two things it's cold I'm not happy third thing it means I'm in my basement and it's still cold you know I love Ben Pearson bows and I have been hunting for a left-handed pinto left-handed palominos they're just not out there you know one in ten people I mean what, how many can there be I came to this conclusion finally decided to do something about it I'm gonna build my own now not going to build a recurve because you got to learn. This is a Ben Pearson Collegian. They call it a semi recurve. And I'm going to try to pretty much duplicate it. Pretty simple bow, right? Shouldn't be too hard to duplicate. I don't really know what I'm doing. Now, Collegians are 60 inches. I don't like 60s. I like 62, so I'm going to make it a little longer. So what I did is went to Home Depot and I got some nice quality plywood here and I got to make a form. And I'm going to do that. We're just going to walk you all through it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay it out and draw it out and try to figure all that good stuff out. Um, first thing you want to do is get your wood, find center, and mark it. Because that's going to supposedly help down the road. Done a little reading. I'm just sort of going to do this as I go. No big right way, no big wrong way. Since I am going to copy the bowl, I'm going to actually use the bowl itself. Now, I've seen people do it two ways. I've seen it with the limbs going down and the limbs going up. You know, and I don't know which way I want to do it. So that should be the first thing I got to figure out. Limbs down or limbs up? Arr. Now if I cut it like that, that goes there. And this has to go slightly past. So I got to make my form a little, make my form a little longer than the bow itself. So let me get my tape measure. Okay, I got it outlined, but I've got a couple questions I'm running into that i got to figure out. On the ends, right? On the end of the bow here, should I give it a little extra? Or should I make it exactly that? Um, I think I should go a little past it, then I could always cut it and bring it down. But you know, it starts that curve, and you don't want that curve to start taking off too much. So there's my first question. So I'm going to play around with it, maybe do some quick research on the internet, and see what answer I get. So I'll show you real quick what I did. Center of the form. I drew it out. And then I marked each one at this spot here, so many inches in, one inch out. And then I extended it out, so this is where it originally ended. This is where hopefully it'll end now. My form will go out a little bit farther, so a little hangover. And then we come back to this side, see the same thing. I marked it, that's where it was, one inch out. That's where it did end, that's where it will end, which is one inch out, and you can see the curve. So that's hopefully what it'll be. Now I'm gonna cut this section off. Got a center mark, now I gotta remember, when I cut, I gotta cut in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it and then I'm going to do, use a sand, um, drum sander, to bring it down into there. All right, let's see how this works. All right, the big moment has come, cutting. Now, I could use my jigsaw, but I only never have good luck with these. I always seem to screw it up. So I'm going to try reciprocating saw. We'll find out. Won't be able to do the reciprocating saw because I can't follow the line with it. Uh oh. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I can't follow the line with it. Try 
So much for that bright idea. been informed that I need to wear those. And if the air, it's cold down here, my fingers are going to be frozen by the time we're Alright, two sections cut out. Actually pretty easy. What I did, like I said, I cut short of the line. I'm going to sand down to it. This one here, the line's on that side. You can see it. But, I'd be lying to you. Here's the first one I made. And like an idiot, I've cut to the outside of it. And I got right there when I realized Oh no! But, as you can see, I got plenty more. Alright, now to sand this baby. Alright, got it cut. Bought this at Harbor Freight. I went and looked for Home Depot. They didn't have one like I wanted. Lowe's didn't carry anything like it. It's pretty neat. It cost me 140 bucks. But, hopefully the flat edge let me keep a nice straight edge on it. What I'm doing now is I'm going to sand it down, get it down to my line. Watch this thing, it's cool. I love it. All right, everybody. As you can tell by my clothing and my hair, it's no longer winter. Um, no reason for me taking so long. I just got lazy. So, they're all cut, sanded down to the line, right? And what I did is I screwed them in together. And you can see there's slight differences, but that's okay because I made, this was the accurate one, this is the inaccurate one. I made the other one a little longer so I didn't make up too many mistakes. So what I gotta do now is sand it down and get them level. And I think we're just about there. By the way, I like this, this is pretty cool. I just love that. That will never get old. Let's start here. Not bad. I wondered if I should use a router. I had the one that actually runs along the line. Forms are done, leveled. Uh, drum sander took a little while, but it's all right. Um, not bad. Run my fingers across, see how smooth it is. They're pretty, no uh, big indentations. So I was always taught, taught always. I learned it off YouTube. Let's put this on here. Run it up and down. Gonna put it on the edge. Make sure it's a level. Oh, how if I put it flat on the edge? That looks good. All right. You know, let's talk about this. Wood. I love wood. Don't get me wrong. I love working with wood. These forms, I think they should be made out of metal. If you can get a metal worker to cut them, much better. You know, wood can be affected by moisture, heat, cold, all that other stuff. I just think metal would be a more consistent platform to work with, but I understand with cost. So, got this done. My next step, I'm going to order the parts, 
put my brackets, it'll be time to build it. It's not bad. You know, I probably should have had this done a long time ago. Oh well. Alright, so that's it. That's how you do your form. It's pretty simple. You just cut it out, um, rough it out, screw them together, do the final, check it, forms are complete. Interesting is all I can say. Alright, I'm going to go upstairs, hit the computer, and buy my parts. All right, here we are next step. So we got it all uh, formed all done out. I'm telling you the little spindle sander was a blessing because it kept my things level. Now, big question, we'll find out if it's important once the bow is complete. Um, my two edges aren't exactly the same. There's slight deviations, not much, but we'll find out. So I got my brackets, I'm gonna mark them, drill them, Put them in, and then guess what? It's about time to start building that bow. All right, we, there is light at the end of this tunnel. It only took me like, you know, seven years now. What year is this? All right, hey, right. so you can do that, then we're gonna move on. So, no sense you watch me, I'm gonna turn the camera off and knock out this section. All right, here she is. I did have one uh, problem, uh, probably all me. On this one and this one, somehow my holes didn't line up, so I just kept the top ones in place and drilled some side ones in. A uh, big question I had, which I could not find an answer to, is when you do this, you're supposed to put a Formica strip on here and they tell you to laminate it. Now here's my question, which I couldn't get an answer to. We know that we put the epoxy on our limbs to laminate, we put them in the hot box, to make them more heat resistant. So if I put epoxy on that to hold that laminate in and it keeps going in the heat box, isn't this thing going to like lose its uh, durability? So I came up with the cheapest method. I'm just going to tape it. It holds it in place. I don't think that's going to make that much of a difference. We will find out. All right. Uh, took my riser. All right. Big thing you gotta do, if you do this, is you gotta make sure on whatever's gonna be your bottom one, right, which is this one. Right here, or not the bottom one, the proper side of it. That lines up as best it can, all right? So that's where we're at. Um, I'm almost there. Got a few more head scratches to do, but making progress. All right, already set up. <coughs> bowls, bowls over here. Not built. The forms are over there already go. He did a heat box. Thing about doing it different ways, try to get cheap. So I don't want to build the big plywood one and have it take up all this room. I want something I could take apart. I came up with insulation, but then, brilliant idea. Insulation, not stiff, but. If, if, I take it and build it under here, but great, what about the lights? Not going to use lights. I'm going to use space heaters. Might work, might not work, but it's all about experimenting and finding out. All right. One more project. <laughs> Dry run. Always do that. Don't just do it. All set up. You can see it's not perfect. It's just a quick rough to make sure everything fits. Make sure these lock in. I'm going to inflate mine with a tire pump. Here I am. Um, interesting thing that came up. 
every direction I've seen, everybody on YouTube, the directions that I bought from Bingham, everybody else says when you're done with the form, you put it in the heat box. Right? This is the directions from the manufacturer of EA40. Right? The people that make the epoxy. Now, they tell you to put in the heat box for anywhere between four and eight hours, and then you let it come out and sit and dry for the rest of the time at room temperature, about 12 hours. But according to EA40, right, it says, um, apply to prepared surface and let cure for 24 hours. Then, next sentence, applying mild heat will cure EA40 faster, uh, 150 degrees for six hours. So that's what they're talking about, right? A mild heat, 150 degrees. Now, it says, after EA40 has cured at room temperature. Got that? Post-curing. After it has cured at room temperature, heating the epoxy to 150 degrees Fahrenheit for four to eight hours will increase physical properties and performance. Let cool to room temp before removing bonding substrates, machining, etc. So how I take it is that you're supposed to let cool for uh, cure at room temperature 12 hours, then you're supposed to put it in the oven. But the sentence before it says applying mild heat will make it cure faster. So even they have contradictory oven, uh, wording. So. Anybody knows the right one or EA40, let me know. All right, here it is. Moment of truth. Will it blow up or will I and I die? Lots of cracking. Tons of cracking. Cracking is never good. I do see lots of goo, but I, uh, I sort of went overboard on the epoxy. My big question will be the phase where I had that issue. Oh man, getting it off there, I'm going to need a knife because I wrapped those suckers like you wouldn't believe. It. Hey, hey, well, there's the first success. I didn't epoxy my hose down. Metal strip came out in decent shape. All right, one thing I am going to say. If you're going to build your own bow, I would highly, highly suggest you do a long bow first. Because all it is, you cut that board flat. There's so less work to do with the curves and all that stuff. These curves just compound the issues that you got to work around. But being me, I went for the semi recurve, they call it. Got it off. I will say that for mica strip, real important. And I learned a lesson. I'm going to cover it a lot more. Um, it wasn't totally stuck on there, but as you can see, I had, man, I over epoxy the shit out of this thing. I had a lot of epoxy soak out. A lot. And I had to take a screwdriver and pry it off and break it out. But that's okay because. Doesn't look like I damaged the uh, lamination then. I didn't really do anything hard to it. My concerned areas look like they did seal properly. So boys and girls, I have something. Don't know if it's a bow yet, but I got something. Woohoo! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, weight? Not too bad. It's gonna probably drop a lot of weight once I get all this. 80 pounds of excess epoxy out, like that, right? 
And look how much came out. Yeah. All right. You know, I love building stuff. I'm not the best at it. I make a lot of mistakes, but it doesn't take away from my pleasure of building stuff. All right. So, I only have uh, two full days off this week and one day next week. So, that gives me three days to get this ready because I want to take it to the Pennsylvania Bow Hunters Festival and shoot it there. Well, that's it for that. Now, we just got to get all this crap off it and start out roughing out the shape. All right, went out, got all the goop off. There she is. One thing I will say, when you use a belt sander, be very careful when you do buy the lamination, the bow tub. Um, not a big deal for me because I'm going to narrow it down anyways. But that bow tub is actually very thin, and you can see right there I wore it off a little bit. But that's no problem. I just grind that down, make my limbs a little thinner, which they need to be anyways. Um... My issue, I'll bring it, uh, I'll bring it in the light, that I was worried about, my fades. Looks like my engineered answer to it all came out. Um, looks pretty good. I can't tell if the limbs are straight. <laughs> that would be bad if it wasn't. But uh, not bad. So now all I gotta do is draw out my um, outline for it. Do my ends of my tips, get my weight down, I do all that first, then I'm going to go out and do my handle. But, it looks like I might have a bow. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I got a little bit gump there, but I'm not worried about that. I can take that off my f smaller sander. Yeah. Alright, getting closer. I'm not using a standard template. The bows that I'm basing it off are 60 inches and I'm making it 62. So my, my question that I have is center of the limb. I can't line them up. So I went back to my old self-building days when I built ones out of planks and the guy, um, <laughs> poor man's boy or something like that, Sam, put a string here, mark your center, put a string there, and that's where you find the center because if it lines up here, there and there you look at it, it gives you a really good uh, guesstimate of where center of that bow is, flex-wise and everything else. So that's what I'm doing now. So I want to update you on that because that's important. So now I got that, it's roughed out, looking pretty good. I think I might actually have a bow. Alright, the moment of truth. The knocks have been made. It's all roughed out. Got to string it. Now, being the highly paranoid person that I am, I'm expecting explosions and so safety first. Was going to go get my bulletproof vest, but couldn't take it from work. I'm ready. I'm really not ready. You really should put a liner in this helmet. They claim to do this as a two person operation. I'm going to do it as a one. It is strong. Nowhere near the proper brace height. But I can work on that. But I'm getting closer. Okay. It's pretty much tillered. I took as much as I can. This limb is much weaker than this limb. Oh, you can't see squat, but 
I had an almost an inch difference, easily an inch, and taking about as much off as I feel comfortable doing. I mean, how much can you take off before it's no longer good? Right? Semi recurve, right? That, that. Now, alignment. No, it looks straight there. But now I gotta check for weight. And I'm almost done. Uh, this is the stressful part, do, doing the tillering, because man, you screw up and you wipe out the, the glass, you're in deep trouble. But, I'm there, it might take a little bit more off. Um, six and a half, six, I got a half inch. It's, I mean, it's what, I'm, what it's gonna be. I'm pretty happy, doesn't look too bad. This definitely curves more than this. There. All right, let's see how much poundage is Bad Johnson Bowls. All right, we're gonna test it, pound the scale. Guess we should set it to zero. All right, I bought it to be 40. They sent me all this stuff, supposed to be 40. But they had an extra layer of lamination and they didn't say to put it in the front or back, so I put it on the front. When I say front, I mean here. It's actually the back, belly, back, right? Belly's there, that's the back, so I put it on the belly. All right, now, unfortunately, I found some broken strands in the string here, so I'm a little nervous in that too. All right, let's get this set up properly. Get you working. All right, here goes. Twenty six, twenty eight, just over forty, probably about forty five pounds. Well, um, let's say I got a pivot point up in there. I can, I can loosen that up. This bends heavy here, but not as much here. Hmm. But it held, and it held it for a while. So looks like my my laminations are secure. Uh, a little more than forty, probably forty-two to forty-five. But it's going to be less because I'm going to reduce the size. I'm going to trim it all down and take it from here. Still nervous. Another toy I had for my softball days. Tolerance stick. That's not smart, but hey, I did it anyways. Alright. I like that. See, that looks like a nice bend. The same bend. I mean, not too bad. Let's go a little farther. Hope the string don't break. Take an eyeball out. I like that, Ben. Yeah, it's a nice flow to it. This one, this one drops. This one arcs. But I could check. To see if it's twisting the limbs. Yeah, this side looks a tad stiff, but it could be that. I'm sitting in there straight. And this side, yeah. It could also be this is not sitting there straight. I think it is. I think I got a slight twist. Alright, so I'll follow that knock in a little bit.
All I can say. So I leave it. So I chase perfection. Get perfect symmetry. Or just make it workable. I got an idea. The bow I based it off of. Bends farther than that, just like mine. It almost bends the same way. I think I got it. Maybe I'm just stressing over something that's not really there. Hmm. As Marty Johnson used to say, I think on, um, I think that was his name. I'm laughing. Very interesting. Old school reference. Okay, roughed out. I got it at seven and a half inches. Yeah, I'm gonna playing around. I cut a string. I got a couple strands cut. Hopefully, it won't hurt it too much. Not deep, but I made a notch there. Where my middle finger goes. One problem. My ammunition broke off when I was rasping that. Hmm. So the big test. We're gonna shoot it. And the mess. That's for me having to pick everything up, move it around to do stuff here. Looked really slow though. That's where my legs part. Oops. All right, it's roughed out. Basics done. Now. Couple things about the bow. I didn't have a design. You know, I knew roughly what I wanted, but I didn't have a design for the riser, the hand, or anything else. Based it off my hand, I just kept gripping it and seeing how it worked. Gripping it, seeing how it hold. Um, gonna show you some needle points. That notch there is where my middle finger goes. So I always keep my middle finger in the same spot. Got a little bit of a ledge here for my thumb to rest on, which I like to have. See my thumb, I'll show you a little better. My thumb just hooks right there. That little edge is where the that goes. This, um, I brought this in a little bit so my fingers wrap around it more. You know, a lot of bows that I notice are really thin in here. I kept mine a little thicker because like the Sir Mix-a-Lot song, you know, big butts. Well, I like big grips. I like big grips to take up your hands. And then the other thing I did is I um, limp tips so I could shoot Fast flight strings, and you know most people made a groove all the way around, but did you notice the design? I stopped right there because it's a little arrowhead. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it like that. I think it's pretty neat. It's red, white, and black. So should be fast flight string capable. Slight rounding with more at the back because for mine, shooting up, my arrows tend to go down. I got a little bit of a curve here. I don't like sharp edges. I really don't like sharp edges. I do have a few flaws in it, but you know what? They're my flaws. Um, one thing that did happen, which I don't think is a big thing, in the roughing, this piece of bow tough popped off. Now I do have it, and I'm debating whether to put it on, just, you know, re-glue it on there and rough it out, or do something like that. Sight window, nice and big. It's pretty good. Shot it a bunch of times. Sorry, I couldn't just couldn't resist and it shoots pretty darn good don't know about the speed when I I'm gonna do that here when I'm done sanding I'm gonna do a quick test of it we're gonna see how she stands out she's straight I got a few flaws here and there but you know what hey this is pretty cool I have to admit I'm getting pumped I see a little bit of bump there which I'm gonna take out here in a second all right that's it she's looking good so finish sanding 
uh, coat it, and she's ready to go. Pretty cool. Pretty happy. Sanding is pretty much done. Went all the way up to 600. Nice and smooth like a baby butt. It's smoother than George Clooney trying to pick up your wife. Um, not bad. Been shooting it. I'm telling you, you know, for the first one, not bad at all. Oh. A little rough on the lines in here. Probably could have made it smoother, but it's functional. It works well. Pretty darn heavy. Got some, I don't have no flaws in it. I have errors. <laughs> um, scratched up the fiberglass because I didn't protect it. That's all right. I mean, it's not a bad scratch. So, I have a bow. And it does work. Actually shoots pretty good. Don't know what my speed is. Shooting uh, 10 yards and I can put it right where I'm looking. Shooting pure instinctive. All right. I got to clean it off and then we are going to coat it and then test it. But it should be ready for the bow hunt festival. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty happy. It's my happy face. All right. See what speeds we get. It's not finished. I decided to do it before then. And man, is my basement a mess. Moving all the stuff off my bench, back in the hot box. I'm going to come all the way back here. One fifty-six, not bad. Gotta go get my arrow though. One sixty-eight. So the reason I'm moving back, here's my rafters. So when I hold my bow up, if I don't, I'm not in the right spot, it's going to hit the rafters and I'm going to really be mad. One seventy-one. I'm just finally getting my back tension in. Pretty quick. One sixty-seven. All right, we're gonna do one more. I got a good idea of where it's all gonna be. All right, the arrows are six hundred spine, full length. I never cut mine. One forty-five grain point. So anywhere in the one sixty-five to one seventies. Not bad. Yep, 166, and that was uh, not doing a full draw. So there you go. Speeds anywhere between 165 and 171. Pretty happy with that. It's not the fastest. Definitely ain't the slowest. There you go. I blocked that light out. All right. I do believe I have a bow. All right, everybody. Here we are. I'm really close. Probably another one to two coats max. Um, let's talk about coating for a minute. You know, there's many things you can put on your bow to coat. And I'm going to show you some stuff that I use that I know that works. And being me, it's all cheap. First is polycrylic. This stuff is really good. It's all white, goes on, dries clear. It's really tough. This is what I used on fudge. And let me tell you, boy, I shot in the rain many times. This never damages. And you can buy this at Home Depot. You can buy it in all different sizes. So that's polycrylic. The other thing is polyurethane. Yeah, <laughs> right? Small one like this is fine, you brush it on. Now the problem with this one, it's a lot thicker. The polyacrylic is like water. This is like a um, thin oil and you can get uh, runs with it. So what you can also do is you can order it or buy it spray can form. This is easy. If you can 
use a spray can, you can coat your bow. Stuff's good, I use this on a lot of my bows. Now, I will say that I do prefer using this over the spray because it gives me a much deeper, thicker coating. But I also love to use this, True Oil. Um, pretty good, it's like a linseed oil, it's good stuff. All right, and those are the things I use, but the thing with True Oil is you gotta do multiple, multiple, multiple coats. This one, one coat, maybe two. This one, multiple coats. This one, multiple coats. So if you just want to do it once, this is the best one. I use the um, sponge brush, just apply it on there, and you're pretty much done with one coat. All right, enough of my babbling. I'm going to bring you in, pull the bow out, bring it in, and let's take a look at it. There she is. Um, I do, like I said just a minute ago, or in the last section, I do have probably one more coat on it, because I can see it's not totally filled in all the wood grains. All right? Pretty simple. So, let's talk about it. Some things, bow building. Building a laminated bow, is it difficult? No. It is actually quite simple. Now, don't confuse simple with easy. It's not hard, but it's not easy. It's in between. It all depends on your uh, skill levels, right? I have some background in woodworking. I took shop class in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade mandatory when I was in school. All right? But I've been playing with wood most of my life. I just enjoy working with wood. I am not a craftsman in any way, shape, or form. But yet, I built a bow. Um, the epoxy has got to be a better method. I don't know how to do it. It's just messy as all can be. I heard that's what it is. It's just always messy. But it's simple. Um, biggest thing you gotta do is make sure your form is right. Spend all the time on your form. Don't worry about getting to this first. Get that form perfect. I mean, perfect how you want it. Uh, good fittings, do a bunch of tests. Don't do just one test, do three, four, five tests. The fades, if you do not tape it down hard, Put that extra power on it the air hose is not going to compress it all the way that's what i found in this build bow that's the biggest thing i found in this build that's what i'm trying to say is the fades right i had to physically take the tape and push them down onto each other and then the air hose did the rest if i didn't put that tape there the air hose did not close my fades all the way besides that i mean it was pretty simple i'm pretty happy i got me a nice bow now I'm going to put a Velcro rest there. I'm going to put a leather rest right there. And then this coming weekend, I'm going to take it out to Pennsylvania to the Bow Hunters Festival and shoot it out on a 3D course. One thing I did have to say is I did do some more work on it. I reduced the angle of the grip. I shot about 40 to 50 arrows out of it. And my other grip was okay, but... After about 40 or 50, you can start feeling things that don't feel right. There's a little bit of pressure there. So my uh, modified grip that I put on here now has relieved that part of it right there. And now it's nice and smooth. So there it is from the front. Remember, this is not the, the uh, end finish. You can still see some lines on it. That is my beautiful little... I'm not a big fan of uh, that, but I have become one. Nice and shiny. A right? little thick here, but I do like thick grips. Goes like that. Nice sight window. I like big sight windows. There is my next little one. Flip it over. Some dirt. Alright. Run across. You can see where it's not totally done stained. There's the grip area. Bring it in for you. Pretty good, uh, Bacote or something like that. It's the wood, and it's one of the offered. So you can see from certain angles like that, you can see where the finish isn't totally there yet. And they're there. So, that is it, boys and girls. Um, it's not a tutorial on how to build it. I'm just letting you follow me along and see what it's like, and maybe it's something you want to do. I'm telling you, 
All right, total price. Woo, well, the first one's gonna cost you a lot. No doubt there. If you buy the kit, that's 360. You buy the plywood, that's at least another 40. So that's 400 bucks right there. If you don't have the tools, you know, like the minimum tools you need is a jigsaw. You can do a handsaw, I guess, but that'd be really rough. And I am telling you, you need a drum sander. The drum sander, I use that more than my jigsaw. I only use my jigsaw mainly on my floor. My bandsaw I only used once. The only time I used a bandsaw was to cut my window out. That's it. You know, my bandsaw wouldn't even go in here because I have one of those, I have a Ryobi. And I couldn't, I couldn't cut in like that because this would hit the side. So I had to do that by hand. So first one's going to cost you a lot. 400 bucks. You know, for that, well, you can get a, a you know, custom built one. Yeah, you can. But that's mine. I built that. You know, there's that little self-satisfaction right there, that little pride you get into it. After that, you can wipe out all those costs. After this, all my cost is going to be is riser, laminations, and epoxy. That's it. So you can drop a price to the bull big time. And the time involved, now that I got the form, is going to be greatly cut down. The hardest part is building that form. It takes the most time, and it's the most frustrating, and it's also the most important. All right, so that's it, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know, well, you're not shooting it, Greg. That's going to be in next week's video because you'll see me shooting it then. And I'm going to probably take it out. Uh, today is Saturday. I'm going to take it out Monday on my own and go shoot it. All right, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time with an all new episode 3D Archery. And get out there and start building your own bows. You're going to love it.